Okay, so um, what we did last time uh, was we basically derived relations for the properties of the fluid before and after of a normal shock wave, right? So um, we'll try to understand a little more uh, about that using a problem. Okay, for example, uh, we got relationships uh, like this. For example, M two. Right. So, this was uh, this was one of the relationships, then <coughs> okay, so on and so forth, and we also got a relationship for say uh, P two by P one. Uh, T 2 by uh, T 1 <coughs> in terms of the uh, Mach number in front of the shock. So, essentially, so if I have this as a, uh, a, a normal shock and this region is 1 and this region is 2. So, Mach number here is M 1. right? So, we have <coughs> the properties here listed in terms of a Mach number. Okay. Now, let us do a problem where say this m 1 is given. right? So, the m 1 is equal to 3. So, mark before the shock is 3, um, p 1 is 0.5 atmospheres, t 1 is 200 Kelvin and what we need to do is find out pressure, temperature, velocity. It is as simple as that. right? So, the Mach number is given, uh, pressures and temperatures in region 1, we need to find out these properties after the behind the shock. Okay? So, how do we go about uh, doing this? Okay? So, um, essentially if you now, uh, okay, and then gamma is uh, typically 1.4. Okay, for a calorically perfect gas. Now, in here, you can see that if you put the value of gamma and m1, you should be able to get m2. Okay, and then uh, you can do the same thing for uh, these um, uh, ratios as well, right? So once you get these ratios, then p1 is given and t1 is given. Then p2 and t2 can be calculated. Now. Um, I did the same thing. Okay, I did that, and then now uh, the thing is, if you take a look at any uh, you know, any standard book, right? So what you can see at the uh, basically in the um, uh, annexes at the behind the book that you know all of this is actually listed as a table, right? So what you have is for given say Mach numbers. So, so for given Mach numbers, you actually have M two. and so on and so forth listed for a series of Mach numbers from 1 to 50. So, if you go and take a look at any standard you know book uh, on uncompressible flows, usually it is uh, provided in the appendices at the end of the book. So, you will find these listed in, in this way. So, if you had to do this problem, so instead of you know putting your values in here and calculating it yourself, you can actually go and look at the uh, these uh, charts and just get these values. So, essentially if you go to the chart and look for the Mach number 3 and then you get the corresponding values, these are all listed. Okay? Now, what I did was that I uh, actually put these values in here and I also looked up the values from the chart and I compared them to cross check that you know I calculated it right or you know this is actually calculating what it should and it matches the uh, chart values. It matched. Okay? So, you can try this yourself. Now, another thing that I did is that I wrote up a small little code you know, and uh, so that you know whatever human error is there, when I put these values up here, 
uh, that can be eliminated. So, just I want to cross check whether I was doing this correctly by hand. So, let us just um, take a look at what um, I did. Okay. So, we will do this uh, in this uh, platform called uh, Scilab. Okay. Uh, so, if you are not familiar with this, this is basically an open source environment, you can just download it and uh, run it, it is very easy to uh, install it also. Um, uh, you could do this in MATLAB, if that is available. Scilab is free, so uh, you know, that is helpful. It is not uh, too difficult to use, so if you get you know used to it, you should be able to use it. This is anyway a very simple sort of uh, a code. So, okay. So, let me just sort of walk you through this. So, this uh, gamma is the ratio of specific heats, right? 1.4 and uh, what you will see here is that for given say Mach number here, which is m 1, I calculate um, this a is not speed of sound. Okay. I am just using this as a variable for the gamma minus 1 by 2 factor. Okay. So, then here you can see that I have put the uh, mark m 2 value in the formula for m 2 over here. Then I calculate uh, I have put in the formula for uh, rho 2 by uh, rho 1, then I have p 2 by p 1, t 2 by t 1 and all of these as you can see are uh, in terms of gamma and uh, m 1. right? So, and then I write this out and I am going to plot this. Okay. So, let us see um, for um, the way I am going to run this, I am going to put this as 3 and um, then we are going to uh, run this and see what we will get. Okay. This is my uh, uh, console. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, let me just do this quickly okay, for you to see. Okay, so, now um, let me run this and see what we get okay. and let me let us go back here. So, what we get over here is this right Now this uh, 3 is the Mach number right, 3 is the Mach number, uh, this is m 1, this is m 2 right this is rho 2 by rho 1, this is p 2 by p 1 and in the end this is t 2 by t 1. Okay. So, this is uh, what we uh, get as an outcome. Okay. Now, what in this uh, uh, code you can do is basically plot for as many number of Mach numbers that you want, you know it is just one enter button as you saw. Okay. So, let us uh, sort of uh, do that. Okay, let me see like uh, let me see if I get the same thing as there is in the uh, charts that I uh, talked about. Okay, so if I uh, do this, okay, if I do this, then um, okay. Okay, so what you uh, see over here is basically all this entire uh, chart over here. Okay. So, this column, the first column is m 1, this is m 2, the third column is rho 2 by rho 1, then it is uh, p 2 by p 1 and t 2 by t 1. Right. This is what you get and this you basically we get for all the 50 values. Right. We get this for all the uh, 50 values. Okay. So, now, uh, when you go and see the chart, you will basically see something like this. Right? The chart that I talked about at the back of your books, this is what you will see at the end of the uh, book. Now, let us do something over here. So, uh, okay, let me just go back one more time. Now, for example, if I said um, say Mach number is, uh, is 3, right? so then the corresponding values of M 2 is 0 0.4 for 7.5 then uh, you know this is rho 2 by rho 1 and p 2 by p 1 and t 2 by t 1. Right. So, um, like one way was to come here and calculate it you know putting your values of 
uh, gamma and m 1 uh, and all these ratios you could get by hand calculations. And the other is to go back to the you know to the available charts and use it from there. And uh, this is a code then again which gives us you know uh, this basically the chart you know which is at your uh, you, you can just do it for any number of values. And the usefulness is you know if you need you know values between say 2 and 3 you know and then you know a code like this comes in handy because it you know you can just uh, you know use that particular value of Mach number and get the corresponding values. It reduces you know human error okay. okay. Now, let us um, uh, for these whole range of Mach numbers all these range of uh, Mach numbers let us uh, look at these plots which I have brought it over here. Okay. Now, let us just uh, say look at this one. Okay. Now, what you see over here? Okay. What you have uh, on the x axis is m 1, what you have on the y axis is uh, m 2. As you can see in the x axis m 1 goes from 1 to uh, 50 and this is your m 2. Okay. Now, um, what you, what you uh, notice uh, from here, right. what do you look when you look at this curve what does this tell you? Okay. Now, for example, say if you look at this curve and uh, say you are, you are changing your m 1 your incoming Mach number say right from say uh, 1 to 5. Okay. You increase your Mach number incoming Mach number say from m 1 equal to 1 to m 1 equal to 5. Right. That is um, one way uh, that, that is one change. Another change is say you have an incoming Mach number of 25 and you increase that to say 30. Okay. What, you th what do you notice from this curve? What I would like to see uh, like for you to see over here that if you are say going from m 1 equal to 1 to m 1 to 5, there is a very sharp change in the Mach number m 2. right? That is accompanied by a large change in m 2. Whereas, if you go from Mach number 25 to 30, the change is not so much, it is almost none. right? And if you remember that in one of the previous lectures, we did say that um, m 2 always tends to a finite value. Even if you increase Mach number m 1 to infinity, m 2 will tend to a finite value. Okay. So, what this is telling us is that say m 1, so m 1 I have a change, right. So, m 1 say I am going from uh, 1 to 5, right, and m 1 I am also going from 25 to 30, right. But what this is going to do is create a very large change in the m 2. It is creating a very large change and a very sharp change in m 2, whereas here the change is not so much. Right? What this is telling us is that here the change is not so much. Okay? Now, um, if you also uh, sort of uh, look at this, Okay. If you have say Mach number uh, 5, right? if you have say Mach number 5, then your correspond say or say Mach number uh, 3, then you, you have a corresponding m 2 uh, around 0 0.5 actually, right? 0 0.475 that is what we calculated. So, around uh, say 0 0.5, okay. but um, when you have a Mach number of 25, and the corresponding m 2 is around uh, 0.3. Right? Now, what does that tell you in terms of the speeds? What does that tell you in terms of the speed of the flow? Right? So, um, is that giving you some idea about how sharp or how strong the shock is? Right? So, you have a very high supersonic flow, you have a very, very high uh, supersonic flow. Right, and that M two 
is really much uh, less than one, right? Is is it's a, it's say around m two is around say say uh, point three. So does that give you an idea about how strong the shock is, right? So now the 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 point is when we have an incoming Mach number, when we have incoming Mach number, say m m one is just about uh, uh, a sonic. Okay, we have a very weak shock. Okay, we'll talk about this in a little detail in a couple of uh, next classes. So, um, if you have a, a sonic sort of Mach number, okay, nearly nearly sonic, then you have very um, a, a weak shock, okay, and that is usually um, the kind of degenerates into a what we call as a Mach wave, okay. On the other hand, if you increase uh, this uh, Mach number. Right. If you increase this Mach number, you have you know very large changes in this um, in the M2, right? So the difference between you know very highly supersonic flow and the flow aft of the uh, shock wave is very much. So then that becomes a very very strong shock. Okay, it's a very very uh, strong shock. At the same time, however, okay, the more you increase. Um, uh, the incoming uh, Mach number, this M2 however tends to a, a finite value, it does not keep decreasing right for the rest of it. So, um, that is what we take away from uh, essentially this uh, uh, plot over here. Okay. Now, uh, let us say then this is how uh, the pressures uh, look like, this is how the pressures look like. So, uh, you know this is what you can see, this is your uh, incoming Mach number along the x axis and what you see on the y axis is P 2 by P 1, is not it. So, um, this is sort of um, increasing, okay, but more or less uh, uh, smoothly. What does this tell us? P 2 is more than P 1. Okay, and then this is uh, the T2 by T1, right. So, x axis is Mach number, so it is going from say 1 to 50, and the y axis is uh, T2 by uh, T1, this is also a smooth increase. Okay. All right, so I, I plotted all these things uh, almost at the um, uh, same, you know, same uh, plot. Okay, I do not think this is a very good one. Okay, we need different axis actually to do that. Okay, so uh, therefore, uh, in having a code like this is pretty handy, uh, it is uh, fun to do for one and you can do whatever you want and put as many values here as you want. But uh, if you go look at the charts, you will also see something else other than whatever I have listed over here, which is m 2 rho 2 by rho 1 p 2 by P 1 and T 2 by T 1, you will see something some more values there as well, which are the uh, values with a, a subscript naught, which is essentially the stagnation or um, total conditions. Okay. So, let us sort of go and uh, talk about that a little bit and uh, see um, what those values actually mean. Okay. Now, let us do this here. Now, uh, as we have done this before, Okay. So, say uh, we have this uh, shock wave. Okay. So, we have a shock wave okay. and this is say the region 1 and this is um, region uh, 2. Okay. So, a normal shock wave is happening in this way. And say at region 1, the properties of the uh, fluid are Mach number, and so on and so forth, right. So, these are so this is a supersonic, I think this is established now. This is the only way we can get a normal shock wave. So, we have an incoming supersonic flow. So, we have m 1 over here and you have a um, p 1 rho 1 t 1 u 1 
S1. Okay. Similarly, here, so we have a uh, Mark II, which is subsonic, and correspondingly, we have P2, um, rho 2, T2, U2, S2. So, S is the entropy. Okay. Now, these are values which are uh, for which are the actual flow properties. Okay. Now, let us define two more um, regions or two more conditions. Okay. One is this this point A and this point uh, B. Right? Now, these two points are the, um, okay, let us define A. Now, this is a point which is essentially I take the fluid at uh, condition 1, right? It is moving with these parameters and I isentropically bring it to 0. The speed of the flow becomes 0 at this point A, which is U A is essentially uh, 0 over here. Is that the right thing to say? Yes. Okay. So, now uh, therefore, this is a condition. So, where um, I isentropically bring it to uh, bring it to a stop. Okay. So, therefore, the corresponding values here are okay let me uh, sort of write it over here okay so this point a okay so the corresponding uh, flow properties over here are p a okay t a uh, s a so on and so forth okay now this is the uh, location for a okay now p a here now these are also so since this is a stagnation condition i will also write this as with a subscript 0. Okay. This T naught as 1 and this is S naught as 1. So, these are the corresponding properties at this point A. Okay. So, again let me repeat that this is a point at which I bring the uh, fluid at 1 isentropically to 0. The speed of the flow here is 0. Okay. So, similarly, this is the point B, it is an imaginary point basically. So, what we do is we take the conditions at 2 here and um, bring it uh, to a point where this becomes uh, uh, here. So, this here it becomes again 0. Right. So, this is from this condition, from a subsonic condition, I bring this to a point where this is 0. Okay. So, again the corresponding properties uh, for, uh, for B here, okay. for B here is P B. Again, this is a uh, total condition or stagnation conditions, then T P is T 0 2, okay. let me call this as 0 2 and S B is S 0 2. Okay. Now, having said that, Okay. Do you think we could incorporate anything else? Now, what I said here was that we get from condition 1 to the condition at A isentropically. Right? And similarly, here too we get from condition 2 to B isentropically, which means, which means that when I do this process, my entropy is constant, my entropy does not change. So, hence it is isentropic, right? which means that therefore, S A, S A here is equal to S 1, right? there is no change in the entropy. So, therefore, I can write this as S 1. And similarly, this process too is isentropic. So, therefore, S B here, this is the entropy at the uh, condition B. So, this is equal to S 2, since there is no change in the entropy. Okay. Now, let us do uh, this. Okay. Now, let us take the uh, energy equation. Okay. Now, let us take the energy equation, which is Right. 
So, this is the uh, energy equation. Okay. Now, what we will do is we will take that energy equation okay, and we can also write this as Now, we can also uh, now what we will do is we will take that equation and apply it between uh, different points. Okay. Now, let us apply that equation between regions 1 and 2, right? between the actual flow properties at 1 and 2. Okay. If I do that, then what I get is this. Okay. Now, the next is that uh, I apply uh, this equation, the energy equation between this, uh, the actual condition at 1 and the imaginary position at A. Okay. So, if I do that, what I get is this C P T 1 plus U 1 square by 2. This is at 1. Now, this is the point A, which is C P T naught 1 and u 2 is u 2 is 0 uh, sorry u 1 uh, u a is 0 right. So, this is what we get. So, now similarly now I apply the energy equation between the point between the region 2 this is the actual flow conditions and the imaginary position at b right. So, again what we get here is C p t 2 plus is equal to now this is the uh, region 2 and region B here is C p right because u 2 is uh, u b is 0. Okay. Now, once we get these three uh, expressions from here what do you infer looking at these three equations over here. Okay. Now, let us uh, look at this. So, what do we have? So, we have C p uh, t 1 plus u 1 square is equal to C p this. Now, the C p t 1 square t 1 plus u 1 square by 2 is equal to this is it is not it from the, this this because you can see that from this e equation right. Therefore, what we get what we infer from here is that C p t 0 1 is equal to C p t 0 2 or t 0 1 is equal to t 0 2. What does this tell us? What this tells us is that the stagnation temperatures do not change across a shock wave. Okay? So, or the total temperatures do not change across a shock wave. Okay? Another thing that it tells us that the C p this, this is nothing but the enthalpy is not it. Now, this is the total enthalpy. So, the enthalpy does not change across a total enthalpy does not change across a normal shock wave. Okay. So, that is what we infer from over here. So, T naught 1 is equal to T naught uh, 2. So, if we um, yeah. So, if we go back over here. So, we have T a T naught uh, 1. So, let us write this as T naught, right. So, basically across the shock wave, so um, the total temperatures do not change and um, yes, there is an uh, entropy change of course. Okay. So, this is what we get from uh, here. Now, if I have to uh, do this. Now, um, so, let us therefore, from here let us calculate the entropy change. Right? Let us calculate the entropy change across a uh, normal shock wave and how are we going to do that? Okay. So, uh, now let us uh, try and calculate the entropy change between say A and B. Okay between A and B. Now, uh, for an isentropic process, we know that the entropy change is given by uh, 
am I writing this correct? Yeah. Okay. Right. Now, uh, between uh, if I do it between B uh, between A and B, the total entropy change between A and uh, B, what uh, essentially we get is that. Right? We can write it like this. Right? Now, this uh, all I am doing is uh, taking the second location as uh, the point B, first location as the point A. Right? So, I am just writing that in terms of this. Now, as we have uh, discussed, right? so this S B is actually equal to S 2. Right? S B is equal to S 2 and S A is equal to S 1. Right? So, let us rewrite that. So, therefore, this is S 2 minus S 1, right. This is equal to T B by T A, right. Now, we just derived that T B is equal to T naught 2, which is equal to T naught and that is equal to T naught 1, right. There was the stagnation temperatures, total temperatures do not change across a shock wave. So, essentially this is equal to T naught. So, T B is actually equal to T A which is equal to some uh, stagnation temperature, it does not change okay? and minus r and l n and like we have uh, we uh, wrote the expressions since these are total uh, conditions or stagnation conditions we denote this as with uh, subscript naught. So, therefore, p b we denote as p naught 2. Okay? So, what we get over here is p naught 2 by p naught. 1. Okay. Now, once we write that here, you can see what we get. Now, this turns out to be this term goes to 0. Okay. So, therefore, what we get, okay, let us see, let us go back here. Okay. So, therefore, what we get is okay. So, uh, we get this or we can write this as So, this is what we uh, what we get. Okay. Now, what else can we infer from here? Now, this is a, a normal shock wave, right, which is and the process is isentropic, is not it? Now, so what can we comment about uh, S 2 minus uh, S 1, right. Now, S 2 minus S 1 is positive, is not it um, and it is increasing. Okay, across a normal shock wave that comes from the second law of thermodynamics, right? We discussed this last time. Now, so therefore, what we can see from here is that, right, which means that the total uh, pressures, right, the stagnation pressures decrease across a, uh, a normal shock wave, right? You can see that from over here. Okay, so. Um, uh, and also, what uh, if you r remember, um, we can write the, for example, if you see this expression over here, we can write the T 2 by T 1 and P 2 by P 1 in terms of M 1, right. We can write these expression, these um, right, and this also is a function of just M 1. Therefore, what that makes is that this S 2 minus S 1 is also just a function of 
m 1 right. So, therefore, here also. So, therefore, this is also just a function of m 1 which means that, that p naught 2 and p naught uh, um, the ratios of the, um, the stagnation pressures are also a function of just m 1 and therefore, that also is available in the charts. So, I can just include that in the code that I have written. Okay. So, uh, again so therefore, this is also a function of just m 1. So, this is also available in the in the in the charts. Okay. So, um, Okay, so having done that, uh, okay, I think. Okay, let me give you some of the numbers that uh, I got, so you can get that from the code as well. So, uh, so that you can sort of finish this uh, problem. Okay, you can complete this problem. Okay, so now here in this particular problem, what we said was that uh, the initial Mach number is given. P 1 and T 1 is given, gamma is given, find out M 2, P 2, T 2 and U 2. This was the problem, right. So, for M 1 equal to 3, we got a P 2 by P 1 as 10.33, T 2 by T 1 as 2.679. You can write the 6 to 8 actually. Okay. And an M2 is around it is actually 0.47. Okay. Let us it is actually 0 0.4752. So, I will just write it as 0 0.47. So, these are the values that you get from your chart. You calculate it yourself using the equations or you know write up a small code. Okay. After that, how do we get um, uh, so P 2, right. How do we get P 2? Now, P 1 is known, right. P 1 is 0 0.5. So, therefore, P 2 is just 10.33 into P 1, right. And that gives us 0.4752. Okay. Then similarly, we get T 2, which is T 2 by T 1, which is uh, 2.68 into T 1, which is uh, 200 Kelvin. So, this is around uh, 500 and uh, say 36 Kelvin. Okay. Now, then we need to find, so we found out M 2, P 2 and T 2. Okay. M 2 we got, got straight away from the, um, uh, from the, from the charts. Right. And P 2 we just have to sort of uh, take the ratios and calculate depending on the um, start up, start up values. Okay. Mm, how do we get A 2 now? Well, what we need to do here is calculate this. Right. So, if I do this, so this then becomes this is the speed of sound. Right. So, this is 1.4. I take the standard value of R and T 2 is 536, right. So, what I get over here is 464, right 464 and from there the way uh, the way we know uh, M 2, right. So, therefore, U 2 is equal to M 2 into A 2 and which we get as 220 meters per uh, second. Okay. So, this is what uh, this is uh, what we this is how we sort of uh, finish this uh, problem. Okay. Now, um, uh, if I may just sort of do a quick problem here one more time. Okay. So, in here actually okay, let us sort of um, introduce this. Okay. So, um, so, essentially okay. So, basically if you are if the when you solve problems like this. Okay. So, we can get the values for this relationship from the charts okay. and uh, you constantly refer to them and you can look at it. So, there are isentropic charts and uh, there are also uh, charts for um, uh, normal shocks. Uh, okay. Now, for example, let us uh, look at another problem.
Okay. Now, for example, look at this. Uh, look at this. So we have a blunt nosed missile. So we have a blunt nosed. Right, and that is flying it mark at. Uh, that's flying at mark two as standard conditions, and so what we need to calculate is the. Temperature and pressure, right, at. at the nose of the missile. Okay? Uh, so, what we essentially have is we have a blunt nosed uh, missile like this right? and we need to find out the say say let us look at it this let us call this is the nose. So, what we need to find out is the temperature okay? the temperature and pressure at the nose over here. Okay, and uh, the blunt nose missile is at uh, Mach uh, two. Okay, so what is given at standard temperature and pressure? At standard temperatures and uh, pressure. So what do we do uh, over here? Okay, now this uh, here, as you know, this is a supersonic uh, missile. Right, it's a supersonic missile. So what this will cause is a detached bow shock. So essentially, this part is a normal shock over here, is not it. So, basically this is a streamline which is going through. So, if I consider this point over here, right? if you consider this line, so it is passing through a normal shock. Okay? It passes through a normal shock and then this, this is my nose. So, if you consider this as say region 1 and a, say uh, uh, region 2. right? So, what you have over here? is that Mach 1 is 2. Then standard conditions, so I will just say P 1 is and uh, T 1 is uh, 288 Kelvin and uh, yeah, so this is a bow shock. So, what we need to calculate is the temperature and pressure here we need to calculate temperature and pressure over uh, here. Now, what the way we will do this, okay, the way we will do this So, we talked about stagnation conditions etcetera so far and so you know several times we derived equations etcetera okay? and we said those are imaginary conditions and so forth. Now, here is a point this is at the at the known. So, this is a stagnation point is not it. So, therefore, we will what we will go uh, is we will go and look at the charts and look for the ratios of these stagnation points stag properties at these stagnation conditions. So, from the tables what we will get is this from the tables. So, we will get it from tables what we get right we get this to be this P naught 1 right. So, what you get th th now this is something that you get from your isentropic tables right. So, if you get this now we know that the stagnation temperatures remain same across a uh, sh uh, shock wave, is not it? Across a normal shock wave. So, you get this. So, the way we will calculate this is again, right. So, T 1 is uh, standard condition, this is known, right. So, if I do this, then I get something like this. So, you can calculate this yourself. So, what I get over here is. So, essentially this is what? This is 1.8288, right? This. So, what I get is 
Kelvin. Okay, and again, so this I get from isentropic tables. Okay, and again from uh, normal shock tables. Okay, so we get from normal shock tables what we get is right, and we get that as point this. Okay, so therefore. P naught 2 by P naught 1, which is P naught 1 by P 1. So, this is just writing it in a way, so that you can use your, uh, use the information that is available. Okay. I am just you, you doing, um, doing the math over here. So, if you put it all the values, what you will get is this. Right. So, what we found out essentially is the temperature here, temperature at the nose which is T naught 2 and P naught 2. What we did here is that we noticed or we realized that this is actually a stagnation point. Okay. This is stagnation point and uh, we were able to use the isentropic tables and then we used the normal shock tables and then uh, use the information available and we were able to calculate the temperature and pressure at the nose. Okay. Okay, I think what uh, we will do is a uh, hmm, couple of uh, more problems, we will calculate the entropy change etcetera and see how we can do that again using the tables and then. Uh, so, okay, we will stop here today. Okay, thanks.